Joining us next on this technical track is Tarush Agarwal, founder and CEO at 5x Data, talking to us about democratizing data access with APIs. Hey, welcome, Tarush. You're on mute. I'm just going to move it to the presentation. Sure. Awesome. Am I good to go? Yeah, yeah, screen is not yet. Yeah, yeah, your slides are coming up. Yeah. Yes, I can see your screen. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Go. Over to you. I'll join you after 20 minutes. Thank you. Great. Hey guys, welcome. Um, excited to chat. We're going to be we're going to be talking about democrat democratizing data access with APIs today. So, just a quick housekeeping. Uh, I'm going to present for about 20 minutes. We're going to have about five minutes of Q&A. Uh, anything I present today, I'm happy to share with you. So if you want to follow me on Instagram or on LinkedIn, follow me and just DM me and I will share the content and any notes um, I present today. So you'll have to take less notes. With that, let's get right into it. So a little bit about myself. I have been in the data space for the last 12 years. Most recently was heading data at WeWork, scaled the group up to about 100 people. WeWork um, used data to open up 800 offices globally. Uh, I, I was also, uh, I started my career at Salesforce where I was the first data engineer. Um, and I have been part of the data community for a while. I, I started the data community in China. Um, so just a quick introduction on myself. So let's get right into it. Everyone talks about data being the new oil. The Economist wrote this super famous article in, in 2018 talking about for the first time how data, how tech companies had overtaken oil companies and were now the most valuable companies in the world. So the Googles, the Facebooks, the Apples became more valuable than the oil companies. And this was meant to start the entire data revolution. But it turns out that 95% of companies today don't get any real value from data. So what we've seen is that actually extracting value from data has become non-trivial. So why is that? What happens is that as companies start to scale, right? A lot of you here work for amazing companies in Singapore or in the region. And as these companies start to scale, founders want to start investing in data. But what happens is that it's non-trivial to go do this. So what they end up doing is hiring a business analyst or a data analyst to start answering questions for the business. And what happens is as the business starts to scale, now all of a sudden you need more and more and more analysts to keep being added onto the business in order to answer questions. And what happens is that as you keep adding more analysts, now these analysts are not really coordinating with each other. You start having multiple sources of truth, different departments like finance and sales start becoming gatekeepers of data. And even worse, they are storing all of their data in disconnected data sources like Google spreadsheets. So a lot of effort then starts going into collecting data and organizing it, but not that much time using it. And I wish I could, I wish this was in person. I wish I could see how many people over here um, have problems around a single source of truth in their company or things like prioritization based on who's, who screams the loudest. Um, these are pretty common symptoms we see um, when companies are unable to really leverage data to scale the business. So this is what's really going wrong and this is why 95% of companies today are unable to gain value from data. So now that we understand this, what is 
democratization of data access, what does that really mean? And what are the benefits? So in this model, anytime the business has a question, what they're doing is they're going to an analyst. And this analyst then is going to the raw data and answering questions. This is the old model. And why it's not very effective is that now the analysts really become the bottleneck for the business. So if anyone has a question, ask the analysts, wait a few days, make sure the analyst has got enough prioritization on this project, and then you get your answer. In the new way of doing things, it's imagine if everyone in the company could go to a self-service data reporting system, which is structured in a way such that anyone can answer questions. Now, what happens is that everyone in the company can focus on answering their own questions without depending on an, on an analyst. So imagine if you answered your own question, then you didn't have to wait for an analyst to you didn't have to wait for an analyst to run a report. You would be a lot, lot, lot faster in actually being able to get your job done. All of a sudden, data would no longer be bottlenecked by the analytics team. So the first thing which happens is everyone in the company has more autonomy. They can answer questions. And it's been proven that they execute at least twice as fast by having access to a self-service data reporting framework. And the second thing which happens is now the data team can actually focus on high value work. What should we build in the future? What are some additional metrics which can help us build um, build models for the future. So instead of living in the past, which is what happened yesterday, can you produce a report? I need these numbers for our investor deck. We want to figure out what's the usage of this product, where are our customers coming from? All of that is what I call living in the past. If you can automate everything, if you can automate all the transactional stuff in your business, all of a sudden now your data team can live in the future and really focus on the high value work. And that's where um, a lot of, and that's really, these are the type of companies which in the long run execute faster and they are able to find gold inside of their data. So this is what, this is what democratization of the data access layer should look like. Now that we understand what this should look like, how are we going to actually do this? So let's get right into it. How do we build a layer for democratization of data access on top of APIs? So the first thing we want to figure out is where does our data live? Now, majority of data for APIs lives inside transactional systems or OLTP systems. These are the systems which power your website or your application. So you have a lot of data which exists over there. And when you're inside the API realm, you're only ever concerned with the data which lives inside of these transactional systems. But it turns out that data systems have a different scope from API systems. So when you think about data, you don't just want your transactional systems. You actually want data from a variety of different data sources. You have CRM data in Salesforce, and you have customer service in Zendesk, and you might have Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads. If you're e-commerce, you have Shopify. We have the famous Google Sheets, which, which for some reason we can never get rid of. If you're a POS or an online, accepting online payments, you might have Stripe or Square. So your Postgres or your transactional databases do not paint the entire picture. So the first thing we have to realize is when we want to democratize data access, it's going to be a larger scope or it's going to be more data sources than just the data sources which feed in into your APIs. So now that we understand this, if we wanted to start building our own pipelines from our different data sources to our warehouse, and let's say the average small business has more than 10 different data sources, if we had to go build out our own integration and our own pipelines between all of these different data sources, this is 
a huge project. It would require multiple engineers and it would require a lot of expertise and maintaining, which is non-trivial, both in terms of time as well as in terms of effort. So this idea of building your own pipelines is not a very scalable solution. And this is really what you know, 60, 70, 80% of startups today really employ data engineers to go build pipelines. Now, if you really want to get to a scalable solution, we can't do this. So what instead we have to do is we want to be able to leverage a fully automated data pipeline. Now, what that really means is building your own pipelines is an older, is an older way of thinking where you're, where you're leveraging ETL, extract, transform, load. So you extract the data from your source system, you then transform it in a way to answer questions, and then you load it into your warehouse. If you want to start automating data ingestion, we've got to move towards ELT where you extract your raw data and load it directly in your warehouse. And once you load it in your warehouse, you have a copy of your normalized data from all of your different source systems. Once you have that, you can now do the transformations later on. And, we, and we'll get to that in a second. So the first thing we need to do is we need to move all of our data from our different data sources, not just our transactional systems, and move it inside what we call a data warehouse. And we can do this in a more automated fashion by moving towards ELT. And ELT allows us to fully automate the data ingestion layer. Once we do this, the next thing we're going to focus on is the raw data is really structured for your application. It's structured for your APIs, it's structured for Facebook ads or Salesforce or your CRM. It's not really structured in a way to answer business questions. Now, if you work with an analyst, the analyst is going and going to the raw data and writing transformations and then giving you an, an analysis on top of the raw data. But as the team becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, all of a sudden, let's say you change your, a business definition. Let's say you change your definition of a daily active user or you change your definition of accounts receivable. Now you have to go change this in multiple different analysis because for each new metric, your analyst has gone to your raw data and written a transformation on top of it. So you start having what you call a massive fan out problem. So instead of doing it this way, imagine if you can figure out what are the different questions you're trying to answer beforehand. So you go to sales and figure out what does sales want to know? You go to marketing, what does marketing want to know? What does product want to know? And once you figure out these questions, you then design a business layer which is really good at answering these questions. So you design a schema, which forget your raw data for a second. If you had your data structured in this format, you could now answer 80% of your questions in a self-service way. So define this format. And once you define this format, you can then transform your raw data into this clean format, which is built in order to answer these questions. So this is really step two. And this is what majority of companies don't do at all. They build their analysis on raw data instead of having a clean business layer, which is used for analysis. And the third thing you need to do is implement a self-service BI layer. So once you have your data in this clean business layer, that's amazing. But guess what? Majority of the business is not technical. So for them to get a value, you need a no code layer which allows them to slice and dice data and answer questions themselves. Fundamentally, that's what, Democrat, that's what democratizing data access means, is if I want to access any different part, if I want to answer any type of business question, I have the tools to be able to do that without depending on an analyst. So the third thing you really need in order to build this out is a self-service BI tool. Now, a lot of companies are using Tableau and in this region, Metabase is popular, or even some forward-thinking companies might be using Looker. The BI layer is important, but the BI layer without ingesting your data centrally in an automated fashion, building out a clean business layer, and only then focusing on the BI layer. If you do the BI layer without layers one and two, then it becomes way more effort because you have to build your own pipelines and now any time a business definition changes, you need to update this manually. So 
real success is predicated on having all of these three different layers, the ingestion layer, the data modeling layer, as well as the BBI layer. And once you have all of these layers combined, all of a sudden you've now built out a self-service platform, which allows you to, um, which allows the business to answer majority of questions in a self-service way. And that's really the goal. And like we spoke about earlier, companies that are able to do this all of a sudden execute far faster and the data teams can now focus on real meaningful work to actually gain value and discover gold in the data. Now, this is a three-step process which is extremely important for startups to do. I've given you the frameworks on how you can go do this yourself and, and that makes a lot of sense. If you want help in doing this, then this is exactly what 5X does. So we help take our, what are the business requirements and really translate that into self-service reporting through what we call the 5X engine, which focuses on the ingestion layer, modeling layer, and data reporting. So you can either go do this yourself with all the knowledge that I've given you, or if you wanna move faster and de-risk this, then we can help with this as well. So that's just an option. Um, so our engine helps you with the architecture models, reporting tools, best practice and trainings. And we also have um, these certified data professionals, which we have vetted in the region, who can come in there and help you. These are the resources who can come in and help you actually execute this better. And that's what we're really up to at 5X. So with that, we have some time for questions. Prashant, are you there? Hey, Tarish. Hey. I'm here, yeah. yeah. Hey, thanks for that. Uh, so sure. just want to know how, uh, uh, what is that uh, time to market? I mean, time to go live with using your uh, platform? How much time sure. if I have a setup? Yeah, so, so so typically um, it would be between six weeks to a quarter is okay. how fast, you know, it, a, a lot of companies when you do this yourself would probably end up taking a lot longer since mm -hmm. this is something we have a lot of expertise in where we've seen customers be able to build out these, sort of build out each of these three layers and move towards the cell service data infrastructure in as well as six weeks. Pretty typically, it's about a three month engagement. Okay, great. And uh, in terms of, uh, so just uh, you're, you're just using APIs connecting to the um, company's data systems and then running it, right? I mean, I don't need yeah. any specific, do I need to make any specific tweaks in my system? How, how does it work? Actually, you don't use the APIs, right? APIs fundamentally are reading off a transactional system. So they, mm -hmm. they're reading off your backend data stores. So, okay. you know, the sort of best practice over here is to not use the APIs, but to leverage data from those data stores and replicate that inside your data warehouse. And okay. since it's replicated one-on-one, -on -one, you now don't have multiple sources of truth. And then the data is then reported on top of, and that becomes your data reporting layer, which is right. consistent with what your APIs would potentially show. Your APIs are more transactional, whereas your mm -hmm. reporting layer is more, uh, is consistent and doesn't really have edit access. It just reports on top of your, on top of your API data stores. Does that make sense? Yes, definitely. Just check any more questions are there. I think we are good here. Um, audience, please feel free to reach out to Tarush. He has shared his coordinates and you can uh, reach out to him, connect with him, reach out to him with any further questions you haven't got a chance to share now. Uh, thanks, Tarush, for this wonderful session. Yeah, absolutely. We do post yeah. a lot of stuff on our um, Instagram or our LinkedIn. My Instagram is I am Tarush, LinkedIn. You can either look at 5X Data or Tarush Agarwal. Um, and yeah. Feel free to engage with us in any way. We're here to help. 
Um, thank you so much for having me, Prashant. Yep, thank you.